give him praise for bringing us through all week long. And we just here to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, Lord Jesus. Because without that, we wouldn't be anywhere. And we, the Lord said, come into his house with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. And we're here today to praise the Lord because he's been mighty, mighty good to us. He's been our bridge over troubled water. He's been out here and there. He's been our eyes. He's been our ears. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping us one more day. Thank you for just allowing us to praise you one more day. Give you your, your due diligence today, Lord Jesus. Because we are just happy to be here, Lord Jesus. And thank you for watching over our kids, Lord. And looking in on the sick and the shut out, Lord Jesus. And the homeless, Lord Jesus. And I'm, I'm just, and people in the hospital, Lord Jesus. We all need you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Each and every day of our lives, we need you, Lord Jesus, because you are mighty, mighty good, Lord. You just are, are just, Lord, you're a good Lord, and we just here to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And if we have any visitors today, I hope you, the word that come across this pulpit today, you will learn something and then share with others. Uh, go out and tell others about Cedar Grove and what you've heard here today, Lord Jesus. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We just can't say that enough, Lord Jesus. And I say all this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Sunday to give glory to him, to praise his name, to give honor to him. Just, just say simply thank you, God, for all you have done. Allow us to make it in a pandemic. Allow us to make it through trials and tribulations. Allowing us to not be detoured away from our purpose in him.
us what it is that he has for Cedar Grove. One thing that I can tell you that he shared with me is, whatever you do, be Cedar Grove. Yes. And don't try to be anybody but Cedar Grove. There are too many churches that's trying to be or look like something or somebody else. Yes, yes, and they're missing yes. the move of God yes. because they're in their own will and not in the will of God. Yes. Let me share one thing with you and I want you to know this really quick. We have to stop believing that the church has to be completely packed in order for the spirit of God to move. Are y'all with me? Sometimes God got to keep it down to a few people that will in order for him to come through to do what he needs to do. So when those that come that really kind of won't, they'll feel the impact of those that will. Because you can't sit in a place that's full of the Holy Ghost too long without being impacted by the Holy Ghost yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's only one thing you're going to do. You're either going to fall subject to the power of the Holy Ghost or you're going to get up and leave because it's too powerful in the house. For you. Are you with Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, God does not need a whole lot of people to lift up his name and do some marvelous things. Yeah. All he yeah. needs, the Bible says wherever there are two yeah. or three, yeah. but those two or three have to be touching and agreeing yeah. on any one thing. Are you with me? Yes. And then it says, and he'll be in the midst. Yes. And when he's in the midst, yes. that means that things will happen according yes. to his power, his will, yes. because it's him that receives the glory. Come on here, somebody. Yes. I feel my strength coming on. My wife just walked through the door. So, yes. see the room. That's the way that I That is my wife, First Lady Ronnell Nichols. Amen. 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 She got up when I was leaving. She got up. I said, you are moving. <laughs> and then you are moving. She has a heavy, heavy schedule. And, uh, and for her to be here, my son to be here, this is one of my deacons. He's, Amen. Amen. He's somebody that uh, rides with me every once in a while. I got to remind him. I say, okay. <laughs> okay. Every, every once in a while, I tell him, Jerome, today I'm riding. <laughs> Amen. I just, I, just need, I just need a moment to just be riding. He yeah. gets all right. It's funny because he it's funny because he'll go, but Pastor, I mean Rodney, and I just kind of give him that mama look, you know, like <laughs> and it's his lovely wife's sister, Yvette Staten, Deaconess Yvette Staten. She has just been appointed um, the education director over at Garden of Praise. So she's responsible for the education of the uh, teaching people about how to share, um, obtain salvation. Are you with me? Because it's a shame that we call ourselves Christians, but we don't know how to exercise or help somebody or walk them through the process of obtaining salvation. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Man, you don't have to be religious. You just need to be right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, I get asked my son, I don't know if he's feeling, he worked after night last night. Uh, but I did ask him if he felt it in his spirit when he blessed us with a song. He, could, right. he comes from the same family. And, uh, I asked him. He didn't, he didn't, I told him, I said, I said, that all can play over there. He can play now. I, I don't think there's too many songs. He's going to be able to do that. He ain't going to go. <laughs> so if, if, if you, you got to make feel, feel something, you want to come share a little something. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. It's good when you have your offspring, your seeds, yeah. and they're in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mind using their gift to glorify yeah. Yeah. and lift up the name of God. Amen. Amen. So y'all put your hands together for my favorite Lord.
so I ain't gonna sing the whole thing. I'm just gonna start with I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just wanna tell you, yes, yes, Lord.
the ability to use that same power in your everyday life. He wants to try to take that from you before you can get it established in you. Because he already knows that once it's in you, you are more powerful than he is and you recognize it. Are you listening to me? The enemy only messes with you at the place where he feels you're the most vulnerable anyway. Come on somebody. And so it hit Monday, and, and then my wife and I was cracking up, then it hit Tuesday. And then we still laugh, and then it hit Wednesday. And, and by Thursday, let me show you how God will encourage you. By Thursday, I got up, I do custom shirts and stuff like that, and I, I got up to get some supplies. I went to get some supplies. And it's a young lady in the store that helps me every time I go in. She wears the black nails and she's always got the dark colors on. You know, that's that gothic stuff. And so, but my 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 stance with her has always been the same. Hey, sweet, how you doing? You know, and, and just being friendly. That's just who I am. And so, this particular day, she looked at me. She says, you're a pastor, aren't you? And I said, yeah, how do you know? She said, because I see him standing behind you. And it just kind of took me back for it. Just, I was like, wow. Because every once in a while, God got to let you know that he's with you. Yeah, yeah. And he allows somebody that is not necessarily connected to him to see something that the people that's so sanctified never see. Because they're so busy looking for something wrong in you that they can't see the power that's standing behind you. Are you listening to me? So I want somebody to, I just, I just need somebody to know and understand that you can be jacked up and messed up and everything else, but God will send something that you least expect to help pick you up and remind you, get up, dust yourself off. It's okay, you fall down, but get up. You may be hard pressed, but get up. Because it's all right, you got to go through it in order to get to it. And if you never go through it, you'll never make it to it. Are you with me? Amen. So I was asking God, I was asking, he put something in my spirit and he kept saying, Hannah. He kept saying Hannah. He kept saying Hannah. And I'm like, okay, God. Okay, God. And what he shared with me about Hannah is this. He said, Hannah had a had a had a disposition that the church needs, especially when a church is going through, they Amen. need to have the same disposition that Hannah had. Amen. Because see, Hannah was desperate enough, listen. To seek God with everything she had. We're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. But even more so, Hannah knew when to say, when not to say. She knew when to do and when not to do. Yeah. And at the same time, no matter what was going on, she still had enough to believe and trust and have faith in God. Yeah. That yeah. he will, but she was specific about what she wanted. Yeah. I, got a I hope that helps somebody just right there. Yeah. So if you will, meet me over in 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 1. Chapter number one. And let me ask y'all, I said, all right, next week I'm going to see if I can bring uh, my praise team over with me, over just to kind of be a blessing in the house. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get your number before you leave so I can find out what they want to say and let you all know what it is. So, yeah. amen. Is that all right? All right. It's some young folk. It's some young folk. Everybody in the group is under 30, well, except for one. They're under 30, 32. Everybody's under 32. Amen. And they are sold out for the Lord. Amen. And uh, um, we just want to make sure we do what we have to do to build, to grow, to allow the Spirit of God to flow. Amen. 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 And leave the power of the Holy Ghost in this place that when anybody come in here, they feel the power of God and the love of God. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Meet me over in 1 Samuel chapter number 1. And we're going to look... Um, at verses 18, at 8 through 18. Amen. Amen. When you have it, please stand for the word. Amen. This is giving reverence unto God. Amen. Amen. If you have it, say, I see it. Amen. If you're still looking for it, say, hold up. Amen. Verse 8 says, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, eight, and verse 8 says, Then Elkaniah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Verse 9 says, So Hannah arose after that and finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and says, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon my affliction, 
of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Verse 12 says, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. Somebody say drunk. drunk. Amen. Verse 14 says, so Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. Verse 15 says, But Hannah answered and said, Now know, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Verse 17 says, Then Eli spoke and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And the last verse says, And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went, the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. If I could use more subject today, I just want to use this particular subject. How bad? Do you want it? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. How, bad how bad do you want it? Want it? Amen. Amen. Let us have a word. Father, I thank you now for this opportunity that you've given for us to speak life and for us to speak encouragement. Now, God, I ask you to hide this old wretched man as me behind the cross, that when they look this way, they don't see me, they see you when they hear. They don't hear me, but they hear you. Anoint these lips of clay, God, to speak only your word in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to allow it to go exactly where you have designed for it to go. The hearts and the souls and the spirits of those that are here. And we give your name praise. We give your name honor and glory for all that you're doing and that you have yet to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. When we look at this passage, there's something that I really want you to know and understand. Um, I'm going to share with you. Last week, it was kind of one of those things where it's like a new relationship. You don't know how it is with a new relationship. You go out on a date for the first time, you're a little, you look cool, but you're a little nervous. Amen. You just don't know what to expect. Amen. Amen. So, so I wanted y'all to know last week, I was a little nervous because I it was on my first date. And I just didn't know what to expect. But I, I had time to reflect the date. Amen. I want y'all to know I feel better now. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? Can I be myself? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Amen. So when we look at this, there was so much that was going on in this passage. Uh, there is, I don't know, a preacher that could not take this whole story and preach this message for three or four months and still never get down to the nitty gritty of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many good things in this. But the one thing that God wanted me to share with us today is that there are things in here that we don't pull out um, about how we're supposed to be in the church ourselves. And he'll use a biblical character and a story of something that happened years, thousands and thousands of years ago that's still relevant today. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. We, we, we know something about Hannah here. We know that, that uh, we know that Hannah uh, was somebody that was sorrowful uh, not because of what she had, but she was sorrowful because of what she didn't have. Amen. Is that is that all right Amen. to say? Uh, she wanted a son. Isn't it amazing? Because back in those days, it was it was it was important to them to have sons because they wanted to make sure that they can put their legacy and the family they could put it in position for the legacy to continue to carry on. Because we know that if they had girls, the girls would marry somebody else's son and the history and the legacy right here would stop. Are you with me? Yeah. It would stop. It would stop simply because, and even if she bore children, it would still stop because now the legacy and the inheritance is connected to the man. Mm. Come on here, somebody. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, when she wanted a son, she wanted a son to be able to carry on the family name. Are you with me? Yeah. To carry on what God wanted to do. 
eight. Amen. But now she wanted the son, but she was unable to have one. Amen. And I don't know about you. There are many of us in here that have children, but it may not be a child that you wanted that you could not have, but it's something in your life that you wanted that God has not allowed for you to have. Have I got a witness? Amen. And it's, some of us have wanted that thing so bad that it's caused us to be in a, in a position of being sad and sorrowful because it seems like everybody else got it and I can't seem to have one myself. Amen. Uh, but I need you to know something, that God ain't going to give you everything you want, but he'll make sure that he provides you with everything that you need. Have I got a witness in the house? Uh, she, she, she was somebody that never gave up on praying to God because she believed in her spirit one day he was going to answer her prayer. Amen. Have I got any praying folks in here that can continue to pray? It doesn't matter what the situation looks like. I'm going to pray until something happens. Are you with me? I'm going to pray. That's that thing, push. They say push. Pray until something happens. I, I, you need to pray so much that people, when they come in, think that you're drunk and that you're drunk. You didn't have something to drink because your position in the spirit has gotten so to the place that where somebody that's not in tune will not understand the magnitude of what God is doing or what you're giving to God. Because when you pour out your best to God, it should take something from you so he can put something out on somebody to get it. But God can't give you something if you don't empty yourself out from the stuff that's preventing you, not just from getting it, but from keeping it. Yeah. Come on, with this? Because you get a little bit of God on Sunday, and you leave out of here and let a little madness hit you before you get home, and everything he put in you gets pushed out because the hell that you're going through is stronger than the spirit of God that's trying to push it out. Now, I got a witness. So we find out here that Hannah herself, she said, she, 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 she said, I'm going to give you something, God, if you give me something. But she didn't just give him something. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. So when we find out what's going on now, we look at this particular story, and we find out that in those days it was okay for the men to have more than one wife. Aren't you glad we're not living in those days right now? Aren't you, aren't you glad? Listen, the women are glad, but the men is glad too, because I'm going to tell you something. The women back in those days, they, they, they was more submissive. The women nowadays, you get them fights in your house and mad because this one got some chicken and this one over here only got taco. You, you be mad. You, you, be, <laughs> you have, have some problems in the house because I told her she was cute today and didn't tell you that your nails look good because, because, because the society has changed. But God has fixed it now to where we're not living that way anymore. The Bible tells us that the man ought to be the husband to one wife. Are you listening? And the wife, a wife to one husband. But here in this passage, you will find out that in those days they were able to have many wives. They were able, they were doing some crazy stuff back in them days. But it was okay because it was part of their custom. Have I got a witness? So we find now in several incidences in the Bible, you will find that it was a man that was married to more than one woman. And it seemed as if the one woman that he loved the most was seemed like the one that had the most issues. Are you with me? And he had to do extra to let her know, I love you more than any other. The song just said, I love, come on somebody. I love you more than anything. But now here, Elkaniah was his name. And he was married to Hannah and he was also married to Penaniah. Are you with me? And isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? We talked this morning about one accord. <laughs> but isn't it amazing that that house was not on one accord? Because if they was, Penaniah should have been encouraging instead of discouraging. She should have been somebody that picked her up instead of always trying to tear her down. Have I got a witness here? She shouldn't have been jockeying for position. She should have said, we're both in the same position. So how about we be better together instead of trying? Come on, somebody. And that's the problem we have in the church is we got too many people that's jockeying for position instead of somebody taking the right position and allowing the power of God to work. Because listen, everybody has the same measure of faith. It's just that some other folks' faith seems stronger because they're exercising their faith. They're not just expecting God to do everything, but they're doing the work and God is blessing them as they're working. Have I got a witness? So we find here that Hannah's in a place where she couldn't have any children. Are you with me? Yes. I'm getting excited too soon. I can't do that. When I get excited too soon, then I start sweating. Then I start sweating. Then I get too excited. So I gotta slow down. We find that Hannah didn't have any children. 
But yet, Penaniah had several children. And, and Penaniah was always taunting and aggravating Hannah. And it's like this, listen, when somebody wants to poke at you, they're not going to poke at you at what don't bother you. Mm -hmm. But they're going to take the thing that bothers you and make it something bigger than you because they're trying to pull you from where you are. If they could, they'll try to make you go crazy. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Because if I can eliminate you, then I got all of this for myself. Yeah, that yeah. That's what I'm talking about in church. See, what happens is we, 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 we go through this thing where we got people that, that don't have the good attitude of God. And so when people come in, they experience the bad attitude before they experience the love. And they never make it to the love because of the bad attitude. And then they leave and never come back. But if we would learn how to have the good attitude... The good attitude can change the bad attitude out because we're all working this thing out together. So we find that Penaniah was, 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 was messing with Hannah. But through the whole process, we find that Hannah was not sitting and allowing it to, 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 to make her do something that she ought not to do. And, and the reason for that is because Anna, Hannah herself had a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Yes. Not only did she have a relationship with God, but she trusted in the God that she had the relationship with. Yes. Yes. You can have relationships with people and never ever trust them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't call it a relationship. I call it a relation. <laughs> or a relational hookup. <laughs> Have I got a witness? Yes, but if you understand, Hannah herself was the fourth woman in biblical history to suffer infirmity. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? She was the fourth one. Who, 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 what are you talking about, preacher? You find out that Sarah, she suffered infirmity. Mm. How old was she before she had her first child? Did not Abraham get permission from Sarah, even though Sarah really didn't want to give permission, Amen. but she wanted to make sure that she gave her husband what he wanted, so he said, go ahead and sleep with my maidservant. Are you listening to me? She didn't want to, but she let him. So she was somebody that suffered the same infidel uh, 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 infirmity. And then we find that there was Rebecca. She suffered the same type of way. And then last, before Hannah, we find that there was Rachel. Mm -hmm. And we find that these people were having issues, but yet God still was able to bless them over and beyond their imagination. Why? Because of their faithfulness to God and their position in God. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So when we look at the story now about Hannah and where they are right now, this thing went on for several, several years as Hannah was being taunted by Penaniah. It went on. But the Bible never did indicate to us that there was a reaction uh, 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 by Hannah back at mm. Are you listening? Yeah. Simply because the Bible declares to us that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And if I can just begin, if I can just give us a few little points so we can get out of here. We don't want to keep you long. Amen. That's been my promise this year. I wasn't going to keep you, keep you long. If you stay longer, then I'm keeping you as because it's the Holy Ghost and not me. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. So when we look at this, if, if we can get the, the, the right mentality, then, then we can do some things like Hannah did. The first thing I want us to remember is this. In this particular story, you must know how to respond. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Yeah. Our problem is we react instead of respond. That's right. Can I tell you what the difference is? When you react, you move off of impulse and off of what you feel in your flesh. Yeah. Yeah. But when you respond, you have to stop and think a little bit before you begin to move forward. Yeah. Are you with me? A response makes you assess the situation before you address the situation. Yes, yes. Because once you put it out there, you can't put it, bring it back in. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? So once you call somebody and tell somebody your mama, you can't say, I didn't mean that. It was already out there. You talked about their mama. Yes. Are you listening? So you've got to know how to respond. Here we find that Hannah knew how to respond, but she knew how to respond how? With grace. And she knew how to respond whether she spoke or whether she didn't say anything at all. Are you listening? Because sometimes the less you say, the more powerful your response is. Are you with me? 
Because when you can understand that the Bible tells you, if you can hold your peace yes, yes. and let the Lord fight your battle, Hallelujah. that's when you can tap into the victory that belongs to you. In Romans 12 and 12, it tells us to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be consistent in prayer. And I think that described Hannah pretty well because she was going through some stuff, but the Bible says that she still made sure that she stood still. Are you listening? She still made sure she didn't react. She still made sure she didn't say something that was going to be detrimental to her progress. She still made sure that she stayed in the face of God. She still made sure that she continued to pray. And then you say, how did she rejoice? She didn't necessarily rejoice in a way that you can say, oh, it's rejoicing. But she still rejoiced by, by, by supporting her husband and the things that they had going on. Because in this particular passage, you'll find that they were at this festival that they would go to every year. They were at this big festival. So in this festival, even though she was sorrowful, the Bible says, in her spirit, yet she was still there in the physical nature. And I come by to tell you that if somebody is not spiritually connected to God, you can put a smile on your face and they'll never know what spiritual stuff you're going through. Come on, that witness? There are churches full of people right now that's upset in their spirit with a big old smile on their face. And because we are not spiritually discerning enough, we will let them leave more messed up than it was when they came because we can't identify beyond the smile. So we find that she's now at this festival, but all up until this time, remember she kept the same disposition. She's kept the same response. She did not allow it to physically pull her from out of where she was, even though it may have been tearing her up on the inside. Yes. And have I got a witness? My, my wife is good at that. Let me tell y'all something. My wife is good at it. I said, I ain't talking about her because she's here. And I ain't talking about her bad because I got no home with her. Amen. And I really ain't going to talk about her bad because I got a strip with her tonight. And I sure don't want to be kicked and no have no cover. Praise the Lord. Because, you know, she get mad in the middle of the night when I do something. And I said, it's one of those nights she sleep bad. Oh, and I'm just never mind. I'm talking. <laughs> But my wife has a way when something is said to her and she's trying not to react. She has a smile. She'll go. <laughs> but if you don't know her, you won't pay no attention. Yeah. So when I see it, <laughs> I back up and go sit down someplace because I already know at this moment you push the wrong button. But instead of her respond or reacting in a way that's going to mess the whole situation up. She grits her teeth to think about it and later on to come back and respond. So instead of it being out of control, we still stay on one accord by addressing it. Because when you're mad, you speak at it. But when you think about it, you speak to it. And I've never seen nobody speak at the spirit and the spirit move. But when you speak to the spirit, mm, come on here somebody. You're open up to speak to it and you're open up to receive from it. So now you can effectively get the move. I forgot a witness. So you got to know how to respond. Hannah could have gone off on Pen and I over and over and over again. But she didn't. She continued to let the love of God mm -hmm. yes, yes. come from her. Amen, amen. What does that got to do with us, Pastor? Because there are people that you associate yourself with every day yes, that, is that has a Pen and I spirit. Yes. That they're always talking about you. Yes. That they're always trying to pull you down. That they're always trying to tell you what you're not. That they're always throwing up in your face how they got more than you got. Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah. There are people talking about you that you don't even know is talking about you. Yeah. But yet they're talking about you. And eventually they're going to talk to somebody that knows who you are. That's either going to put them in check or that's going to come by and tell you that somebody's talking about you. But I come by to tell you something, Cedar Grove. If somebody is talking about you, that means that you got some importance to them in their life. Because I don't know nobody spending time talking about that just don't matter. Have I got a witness in here? So if you talk, they're talking, you tell them, talk on, baby, because God ain't through with us yet. We got to take the position where we understand that our response is the thing that moves the hand of God, not our reaction. And if every time somebody talk about us, it makes us pray that much more, God will hear and he will answer. So we've got to know how to respond. And then, not only do we got to know how to respond, but we must be clear about 
our request. Amen. Are you listening? Yeah. Stop asking God for just anything. Yeah. And be specific about what you're asking about. Yeah. What are you talking about? When Hannah finally made it up in her mind that she's going to give it all to God. Yeah. When she went to pray, she didn't just pray and say, God, give me a baby. Uh -huh, hallelujah. But she said, God, first she did this. She acknowledged who had the power. Yeah, hallelujah. Come on here. <laughs> she acknowledged who had the power. I listened to Mother Maddie. She says, I prayed that God send me some help. Yeah. Because she understood the power wasn't in the preacher that was coming. But the power was in the man that would send the preacher. And if the man that came because of the preacher, that if the preacher came because of the man, then he would have the power to do what he needs to do because of God and not because of man. Are you listening? Because man will mess power up every single time. But if God is leading, it's always going to be perfected in the spirit because it's by God. From God, through God, through the man of God, and therefore we receive it together simply because God is the man with control. So she said, she sat, she went, she prayed. This is what she says. She began to pray to God. She says, God, give me a son. Yeah. Not only did she just say, God, give me a son. But she said it with the intent to give him everything she had so that she can be in a place of expectancy to receive what she was going to get. Yeah. She didn't know when it was going to come. Hallelujah. But she just believed if I give it to him, it's going to come. Yeah. I wish I had somebody yeah. here. This is, if I give it to him with everything in me mm -hmm. and believe that he will, with everything in me. Amen. I can rejoice now for when it comes, yeah. no matter when it comes. So it says she began to pray. She was in there. Now listen, she was in there by herself. <laughs> Sometimes the best prayer meeting is the one of you and God all by yourself. Amen. You don't need nobody else always in the room praying with you because sometimes their prayer don't line up with God's will. And it may help affect your prayer simply because if that spirit is stronger than the spirit you got on you to give God what you got, come on here somebody, it will create a distraction in the atmosphere. Come on, got a witness. And so she was in the room by herself. Eli was close. But she's in there now praying. She's earnestly, she's prayed so to the place now to where she was spiritually drunk. Yes. Has there anybody in the room ever been spiritually drunk? Hallelujah. You couldn't say much. You was just drunk in the spirit. Yes. That is the best drunk you can ever have. Yes. And the good part is the, the hangover you don't want to get over. Have I got a witness here? She was so drunk, but this is the position. Look at this. The Bible says that she prayed without moving her lips. Mm. See, because what we tend to do when we pray, we tend to let this tongue just start rattling off stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what we ask God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your tongue can get you in trouble quick, fast, and yesterday. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And you just praying and babbling, but the Bible says that she was praying from her heart. Yeah. She was praying from her soul. Yeah. She was giving God everything from the inside. It wasn't coming out of her mouth, but her lips were moving. It was mimicking. And I don't even believe that her lips were saying what the words was coming out of her heart, but they were just moving. Yes. They, they, they were just... It was an expression. Are you listening? It was an expression of an inward confession. She was confessing through her heart, but her lips were moving. And isn't it amazing that when somebody sees you and not spiritually connected, they will assume that it's something that is not. Are you with me? He told her, he told her, he said, put that wine away. She said, no, 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 hold on. I'm not drunk. What, my, what was going on is, I'm asking God for something that means a lot to me. I'm asking God to do something for me. And I'm at the place right now. If you don't see it, it's all right, priest. If, if you, how many, how, <laughs> can I just talk to y'all about it for a minute? How many times as us, I'm not going to say them because it's all of us. How many times as us, a preachers, missed an opportunity to help somebody because we assumed that it was something that it wasn't. 
We saw something in the physical and we missed the spiritual dynamic of it because we were so into ourselves at that moment. We were so into what was going on around us that we didn't hone into what the spirit was doing and we missed an opportunity to help somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We misdiagnosed something. Are you with me? Yeah. And in the field of medicine, that's called malpractice. <laughs> and how many times have we committed malpractice in the church? Diagnose somebody. Somebody caught them in the spirit having a problem, and we want to prophesy that God is about to bless you with a house. They don't need a house. They just bought a house. They need a move from God. They need to know that God is real. They need God to put their hands on their children. They need to know that God is still on their side, and you tell them about stuff. Because you want to win people. Yes, yes, yes. And not help God win souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Hannah prayed. Eli almost missed it. But remember, Hannah knew how to respond yes. and not how to react. Hallelujah. If that had been 2021, she could have put her hands on her hip. Amen, <laughs> <laughs> somebody. And she'd have rolled her neck like that. Y'all know how to roll her neck. He told her, no, you didn't just say, I was drunk. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> She'd have been ready to fight up in there. <laughs> Simply because I'm giving myself to the Lord. I'm doing all this, and you thinking that I'm drunk. You know, you done lost your mind. And then she'd be ready to go on. But Hannah just got up. Listen, not only did Hannah respond the right way. Listen, she even addressed him in, the, in, in, his, in his office of authority. She said, no, my Lord. <laughs> she didn't call him even out of his name. She addressed him. That lets you know she was driven by the Spirit of God. She addressed him in his office, whether he was right or whether he was wrong. She still honored his position. She says, no, my Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. uh. I'm a sorrowful spirit, and I'm just trying to get what I need to God so God can get what I desire to me. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. And once it snapped him back into place, he was able to say, I'm going to touch and agree, whether there are two or three. He said, I'm going to ask God. Are you listening? Every once in a while, when you're at the place of prayer, God has to reaffirm to you, never, either in the negative context by somebody saying something crazy, or in a positive, that he's still with you. Yeah. And if God be for us, not only who can be against us, but he's more than the world yeah. against us. Amen, somebody. So we find out that you must be clear. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be anxious for nothing. Amen. See the growth. Don't be anxious to pack a church out. Yeah. Amen. Uh, don't be anxious because, see, you be anxious to pack out something and not realize that you're packing out more hell than you can deal with. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It says, but in everything. And I need you to know that anytime you see but in the middle of a sentence, that means that what's going on has to stop yes. and it has to shift the direction. Hallelujah. Are you with me? It says be anxious in nothing but in everything Hallelujah. by prayer yeah. <laughs> like Hannah prayed yes. and by supplication. Do we understand what supplication is? Hallelujah. Supplication is when you are giving it all to God. When you are letting him know everything from the rooter to the tutor. Can I say that? Is that all right? You are letting him know the bare bone of it all. And not just with supplication, but also with thanksgiving. What do you mean with thanksgiving? That means you got to give it to him and thank him for it all at the same time. You're going to give it to him and you're thanking him. Why? Because if he gives it to you, it's his will. And if he doesn't give it to you, it's his will. But your thanksgiving will keep you from falling apart if you don't get it like you think you should have it. So we find that she made her request known. She made it clear. She says, I need a son. I need a male child is what the Bible says. Eli says, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pray this with you. So we realize that she knew how to make it. She knew how to respond correctly. She knew how to make her request clear. Now the last thing she did is this. She knew how or she knew that her sacrifice was going to cost her something. Amen. Amen. There are too many of us that want to give God the leftovers. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we don't want to give him the thing 
that means the most. Yes, yes. Because we want to hold on to what he is anyway. Yes, hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. We, we hold on to the kids that God entrusted in our care. Mm. He didn't give them to us. He lent them to us for a little while. Yeah, amen. He lent them to us, but some of us haven't done what Hannah did. Hannah said, if you give them to me, I won't give him back to you. Yeah, Are you listening? Yeah, yeah. And, and some of us go through the ceremony. Mm. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. We go through the christening. Yes. And folks go through christening and don't even know what it means. Hallelujah. But we'll go through christening to get a certificate. We'll go through christening because we want somebody to be our baby God mama. That's my God mama daddy. That's my, come on somebody. That's my God baby mama. That's my God baby daddy. You just want to have the title of a God parent. But I need you to know a God parent should be one that fears God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I need you to know that it shouldn't take a piece of paper for you to be a God parent to somebody's child. Hallelujah. You don't have to go through a ceremony to be a God parent to somebody's child. All you got to do is be a child Because if it takes a village to raise a child, that means it takes some grandparents, some godparents, some god grandmothers, some god uncles, some god cousins. Come on, here, somebody. We want to ask God for something, but we want to give him. Listen, why are you asking God for a gallon of Pepsi? And you only giving him the empty can and not the whole can of Pepsi. <laughs> Y'all must know I must want a Pepsi. <laughs> Isn't it a shame that you ask God for something, but you won't give him back what you ask him for Amen. because you want to do with it what you want Amen. instead of allowing him? Because watch, if God gave it to you and you give it back, you'll still reap the benefit of him giving it, whether it's directly or indirectly. Hallelujah. Have I got witness? The Bible says that when she gave after she weaned Samuel. Mm -hmm. She didn't just have him in his head, God. But she nurtured him to the place to where he was a cool. I want somebody to catch that one. That one just hit me. I, I didn't catch that one at first. She nurtured him long enough to where he was able to understand and move on through other directions. Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't Eli's job to change no diapers. Yeah, it wasn't Eli's job to give him no Bible. It wasn't Eli's job to teach him how to walk. Eli's job was to teach him or to get him in the presence of God so that he could groom him to be what God wanted him to be. But her job was to get him to the place where Eli could take over. It was like a relay. Her job was to run the first leg and she handed it off to the anchor leg. Are you listening? Because it was Eli's turn. So she did not. But she still had to hear from God to know how long she needed to take care of him before she gave up. Getting up off of our knees too soon. Because when God is ready to answer, we're ready to move. Yes, She gave him. She told God. How many times have we promised God we was going to give him something preachers? And we still hold on to it. Amen. 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 God, this problem I'm dealing with, I'm going to give it to you. You get up off your knees and put it right back in your pocket. Hallelujah. And you go right back to God asking why you're going through it. Well, you say, well, I'm a gentleman. I ain't going to take something that you ain't going to give me. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. If you give it to me, if you cast your cares upon me because I care for you, then give it and leave it. I got it. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. But some of us believe that. But now, God, you can't handle this one. Mm -hmm. So I got it. But Hannah says, if you give me a child, a male, I'll give him back. Isn't this amazing? Amen. Eli wasn't the best person to be grooming anybody up because his sons were stripping. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But ain't it amazing that you may not have that, 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 you may not have that shifting power working in your house, mm. but that don't mean your shifting power ain't working. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Yeah. And sometimes it'll take somebody outside your house to be shifted by the power that God is giving you for your house, mm. for your house to see that God is moving 
even outside of your house and inside your house. Are you listening? Yes. But Eli's position was, I'm going to do what God says for me to do. So he took Samuel in. The problem is this. How many times do we ask God for something and not give him the best of our sacrifice? Amen. And if we can't give him the best of our sacrifice, then we can't expect for him to respond at the time that he's predestined to, to show up and respond. Amen. Amen. Uh -uh. And we can't get mad at him because we need to examine ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. If I ask God for something, I need to make sure that his word abides in me. Yeah. 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 And I'm abiding in him in order for him to give me yeah. what I ask for in his name. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And Hannah meant exactly what she said. If you give them to me, I'll give him back to you. Yeah. And when she weighed him off, she says, Eli, I'm getting ready to drop the boy off. It wasn't like Sheikah is this time of the year. You know we got these 27-year-old grandmamas now. And the 18-year-old mama dropped the, 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 the baby off over at the 27-year-old grandmama house. And she said, oh, you ain't dropping them off over here. I'm going out to the club tonight, too. Come on here, somebody. But yet she dropped him off, and Eli was ready to get him because it was already lined up by God. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> she benefited because watch this through her ultimate sacrifice the Bible says that she went on to bear more children y'all catch that so in other words the womb that was closed was only closed until God had prepared the pathway watch for the ultimate sacrifice because Samuel was the sacrifice that opened up the door for the other children to come in. Yes. And isn't it amazing that when you research it, she had five more children after Samuel. Mm. Five being the number. Of <laughs> she was a woman that responded in grace. And then she wound up having five more children after her, her, her blessing. She had grace more children. Yes, yes, yes. Are you listening? Yes. Mm. That I know she continued to pray for the same way she prayed for Samuel. Because it wasn't to get a reaction out of God, but it was because that's who she was. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Stop getting your reaction out of God and then going back to who you was before. Oh, what am I trying to say as I, as I tighten all this up and wrap this all up into one little story or into one little purpose or one little cause or one little note or one little conclusion for you all is this. Yeah. Cedar Grove, we may be in a place right now yes. where we're not bearing what we thought we should bear. Amen, amen. But it doesn't mean that the womb is not open. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It simply means that God still needs uh -huh. to line some stuff up because yes. some of us are still reacting hallelujah, instead of responding. Hallelujah, yes. Some of us is tiptoeing around prayer instead yeah, of being yeah. earnest enough to give him everything from the depth of our heart. Hallelujah. There are some of us that are not mentally, physically, or, or spiritually ready for anyone else to come in because we're still a wretch undone ourselves. And we are still at a place where God needs to shake some stuff off us. Because listen to me. Uh -huh. If you can't help shift the atmosphere to the Spirit of God, then you're going to be the one that helps affect the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. And God's plan is that we all on one accord that we may all come in. See, the Spirit of God only comes in when we are open enough to let Him have free reign. Are you with me? Or should I say, He'll come in and we'll identify Him here. There are times the Spirit is here, folks are sitting around looking like, what the people over there tripping for? Come on, somebody. And you can't praise God for what He's done for me. You got to praise Him for what He's doing for you. And then we all praising him together. Mm -hmm. We are praising him for different reasons, but for the, all the same reasons. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can only believe, because the Bible never did go back and say what Hannah, I mean, what a, 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 a Penaniah's position was. Because I know she was looking like kind of crazy when Hannah had one. <laughs> amen, amen. Really because... Up and I had already told her, you know I love you, girl. You know you my boo thing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You know ain't nothing in the world I would do for you, girl. Amen. And then it wasn't that she didn't know he loved her, but I believe she felt inadequate because she couldn't give him what she knew he deserved from Amen. her. Amen. But when she gave him that first one, 
she was able to receive the authentic love that he had for her. Because she was in a position to where she loved herself enough now to stop blaming herself for not giving him what she thought he should have. We got to stop thinking what we think and start allowing God to think for us and be okay with what he thinks. They never said that she threw it back in, in a nice face. Because when God's hand is moving on you, mm -hmm. you may not never see the devastation that the person that messed with you Amen. will encounter. Amen. You Amen. Trust and believe that when the Bible says, touch not thy yes. Yes. do thy prophet no harm. Hallelujah. You keep going. Yes. Let God handle your life. Yes. 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 Are you with me? Yes. She went on to mother five more children. She went on to continue to be a good wife to her husband. You just say, what happened to Penn and I? Well, what I do know happened to Penn and I is she got a rude awakening because she saw God move. Amen. And she had to know that it was only God. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. So it was only one of two things happened. Either she kicked rocks huh. <laughs> or she fell in line to get some of what God gave her. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? Let's stay on our face. Yes, yes. In a prostrated position. Yes. And not move until God says move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be specific with what we're asking God for. Yes, yes. Don't ask God for church members. Mm -hmm. Ask God for workers. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. yes. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Don't don't ask God to make your make Cedar Grove the name that everybody in the world wants to see. Mm -hmm. But ask God to let his light shine so much that all the world sees whether or not you have a time. Right. Hey, listen. Ask God when he comes in here to not just come and visit every once in a while, but Amen. stay here. Amen. Don't give him the sanctuary. Give him the building. Hallelujah. And then let's stop worshiping the building because the building ain't the church. We have Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're the church and the building. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Amen. So let's work on the church. Mm -hmm. yes. So that the building will be filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. And he's ready to put what he wants to put in yes. But our prayer should be for workers. Yes. Are you listening? Amen. Because what the church don't need is a whole bunch more spectators. Amen. 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 This neighborhood right now, mm -hmm. you are in the prime location to be a Great asset for this yes. entire this entire community right yes. here. Yes. There are people that's around here that are starving mm -hmm. for a word. They're yes. starving for some love. But it's got to start here. Yes, yes. Before it can start here. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. Amen, somebody. Y'all mean not like me, but that's all right. We like you. Amen. <laughs> Y'all you know I mean But it, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it's tight, but it's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This week, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. And before you look at yourself in the mirror, I want you to ask God to show you your flaws. Right. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. See, because if he can show you what's wrong with you, mm -hmm. then you know what to give to him. And then when you can focus on making sure he's taking care of what's wrong with you, yes. you'll have less time to point out what's wrong with somebody else. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. And your working should not be contingent on what somebody else is and ain't doing. Mm. Because when you stand before the judgment seat, he's going to say what you did, not because of what you didn't do because Amen. of somebody else. Are you listening to me? Amen. 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 Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Amen. It's all minds clear. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Tell them to play me something pretty. <laughs> Amen. Well, this is the time we've all eyes closed, all heads bowed. This is the time that we have to share that somebody that may want to rededicate their life, give a lot, give their life to Christ for the first time. This may be you, and this is an opportunity that we give as we extend the invitation. We don't open the doors of the church because the doors of the church have always been open. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. with God's church, the doors are never closed. That's Amen. Right. So yeah. our job is to just extend the invitation that somebody may be rededicated to Christ or accept salvation for or receive salvation for the first time. If that's you, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. And then if there's someone here that is not a member of this church that are looking to join this church. 
Amen. If that is you, you can slip up your hand. Amen. We'd love to have you. Amen. See that there is none as there is still room at the cross. Father, we thank you now for this time that we've had to share with you. We thank you, God, for the word. We thank you, O oh God, for those that are here that are listening. And we ask you, God, now that you allow it to penetrate our hearts and minds and our spirits and allow us to respond and not react. Allow us to respond on our knees, God, in such a way that heaven hears and responds to us in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God that you just clear the path for us here yeah, within ourselves yes. so, God, it can make room for all that you have for us. Amen. We ask you, God, right now that it's your will and not ours yeah, and that you bring what you would have that's fit for this time and this season, God, that we may continue to grow and we may continue to grow spiritually and we may continue to grow uh, mentally in the name of Jesus before we grow physically and as we're growing oh God let us continue to be mindful yes. that we are giving you all the glory praise Amen. and honor even now yes. for what's about to come yes. and we thank you for it now you, now we ask you oh God to just continue to have your way in our lives yes. love us continually like you do yes. so that we may know how to love others yes. and we just thank you for it now you, in Amen. the name of Jesus the Christ we pray Amen. 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 Have we taken up our offering? No. Yeah. Okay, amen. I'm going to turn you back over to the hands of Mother Maddie as we prepare to take up our offering. And uh, after which, we will do a quick dismissal. And then uh, I'll have a few minutes to share with you all, uh, member wise. And we'll go from there. Amen. 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 Guess what? I love y'all. And then nothing y'all can do about it. Amen. 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 And Mother Brian, Brian should be up here with the love offering, but I don't see her. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go on and do this.